to take away the suspense immediately, which is always good after a long and trying afternoon with a lot of interesting subjects, uh, the, the universal health share insurance in the Netherlands is neither universal nor free. So, that, um, so to make that clear from the onset to you, um, um, uh, I will try if, um, to, uh, in a short time, to give you an, an overview of how the health, uh, the health uh, insurance act uh, is actually working and what it is supposed to achieve over the next uh, over the next uh, years. And then I'll try and, and give you some. Uh, in views of the, uh, the role of primary care under the Health Insurance Act. Uh, and in doing so, I will present several, uh, two recent cases that we have advised on as uh, Dutch Healthcare Authority. Also, um, you, might, you might have noticed in, in the newspapers, although probably not, it, it was headlines for, for a week and a half in the Netherlands, but I don't suppose it has made the headlines here. But there are recent proposals to change the, uh, the Health Insurance Act rather fundamentally, and I'll come back to that in one of my last pieces of, the, uh, uh, of my presentation. Um, I'm not going to try your patience with a long historic uh, overview, but uh, it's good to realize that we had a, a two-part insurance system, public-private, until 2006, and the reform discussion on the healthcare system started already in 1987. So uh, when I heard Mr. Rayleigh this morning saying that he, within, a, within a couple of years he wants to fully implement uh, an entirely different system and a, and a universal healthcare insurance system, uh, I was a bit uh, skeptic about the time that it will probably take, uh, take him or he is just more uh, powerful or more determined than the, Dutch, uh, than the average Dutch politician, which is, of course, very, uh, very well possible. Um, the Health Insurance Act was introduced in 2006. Some of the key elements have also been uh, addressed by, the, um, by uh, Dr. Crowley in his, uh, in his presentation. Uh, it's a mandatory healthcare insurance with uh, universal coverage, uh, meaning that any, every inhabitant of the Netherlands is, uh, is insured by the healthcare insurance. Um, the basic package is, is determined by the health minis, uh, ministry. Um, as to funding, and th this is the nothing comes for free part, uh, every insured party has to pay uh, both a nominal fee plus an income dependent fee. That goes for every, uh, everybody over 18 years of age. Uh, children up to, the, up to 18 don't have to pay any fee uh, at all. Um, as of this year, there's a mandatory deductible of 220 euros uh, per year per patient. Um, the, healthcare, the, the Health Insurance Act is, is, is executed by private healthcare in, uh, companies who have an acceptance obligation. That means anyone applying to any healthcare uh, company, uh, any healthcare insurance company, has to be uh, accepted. Um, to make this possible, we've also introduced a very elaborate and a highly detailed uh, equalization uh, scheme. Um, which has also been under development for uh, well over 10 years now. So just the, uh, just the development of the, the equalization scheme has taken us over, uh, over 10, uh, 10 years. Um, the Health Insurance Act has two different types of policy. Uh, deliverance of care in kind, uh, which is exclusively contracted by the insurance company, uh, and a reimbursement policy, and then they're still offering uh, combination policies, um, as I but uh, we'll get back to that later on uh, a bit. Um, as I said earlier, it's not, uh, the Health Insurance Act does not cover all health care. Um, we have, in fact, uh, three uh, parallel acts, uh, each one of them um, uh, regulating and financing different aspects of, uh, of health care. The Health Care uh, Insurance Act covers things like most primary care, uh, hospital care and dental care up to the age of 18 uh, and short-term psychiatric, uh, psychiatric treatments. Uh, this Health Care Insurance Act is executed by the private health uh, healthcare insurance companies. Then we have the Exceptional Medical Expenses Act, um, which is uh, where the health insurance companies actually work together in regional uh, procurement offices. This is entirely tax-funded. Uh, uh, health uh, insurance uh, system. 
And then we have the municipalities we, uh, who are uh, responsible for the execution of the Social Support Act, which uh, gives uh, things like home care, transportation, wheelchairs, and also adjustments to, uh, to, uh, to private homes. Um, the, the policy of the government is, is uh, directed towards further uh, diminishing the, uh, the EMEA Act and uh, kind of transferring certain types of health care to the Social Support Act and other types of health care, for example, uh, the long-term uh, psychiatry to the Health Care Insurance uh, Act. The reason behind this is because it is thought that under the system where you have more care within the, within the, uh, within the responsibility of the healthcare insurance companies, you, you will get better coordination of healthcare at a patient level. Uh, that is the, the aim that is, uh, the, the, the policy aim behind these uh, changes. Uh, just a few f uh, figures and also to, to give you an idea of uh, what will probably be the main effort of healthcare in, uh, insurance companies when it comes to cost control. Uh, you see here the, uh, the division of the, uh, uh, of, of the cost. It's annually about 37 billion years under the Health Insurance uh, Act. The EMEA Act I mentioned earlier is another 25 billion uh, a year, and that's the one that's mainly responsible for the annual losses that uh, Dr. Kali mentioned. Um, of these 37 billion, hospital care takes up about 20, uh, 20 billion um, as compared to GP services uh, are only 2.3 billion. Uh, so that's relatively uh, cheap, uh, as you might, uh, might Im imagine. Um, what's the regulation model? How's the, the competition? Uh, where, where does the competition come in? Um, actually, the, in, in designing the system, it was thought that you would need two levels of competition. One is competing health insurance companies, uh, and the other is he competing health, in, uh, uh, health providers. Uh, and the basic idea is that by uh, allowing consumers to, to choose every year between a health insur between health in several health insurance uh, uh, companies, you keep you, you kind of keep them on edge to keep their costs and their premiums uh, uh, at a low level. On the other hand, providers have to compete among each other for, on cost and quality to get uh, to get the contracts from the health insurance uh, companies. So this is the kind of two-tier competition model that was uh, that was planned in the uh, uh, when the health insurance act was uh, was introduced um, under this under this competition uh, model and that is somewhat somewhat strange health insurance are made fully responsible for controlling macro expenses so although it's it's for a large part publicly funded uh, the health insurance companies are, are to a large extent uh, responsible for controlling expenses and not only that they're also in control of capacity and planning we used to have a central capacity planning in the netherlands which is now completely abolished and taken over to uh, and brought under the responsibility of health insurance companies um, a short look at primary care as it is covered under the health insurance uh, act you see most services here you see the number of professionals and the number of practices now, if you look, if you look at, the, uh, uh, at, at, at the market, uh, especially the health insurance market, it's, it's highly concentrated. Uh, the four largest in, in insurance group have already more than 90% of the health insurance market covered. So there's an enormous concentration uh, of, uh, on, on, on health insurance uh, uh, side. Whereas, as you can see from these uh, figures alone, it's not on the, uh, certainly not on the, on the primary care. So, as primary care has a, a very important uh, role in our, in, uh, in our system, uh, perhaps you're familiar with the term the gatekeeper model, it so always sounds a bit unfriendly to, to GPs, but what, what it basically means is that you can't go to a hospital without a referral uh, of a GP. If you, uh, if you go on your own, it's basically not covered unless it is in an, in an emergency uh, uh, situation. Um, this pivotal role of the uh, of the general practitioner is laid down in the uh, actually laid down in the uh, uh, in the health insurance uh, act, uh, which also means that all consumers and all uh, insured persons are, are required to register with a, a local GP uh, practice, uh, and you can and you can see that this leads to uh, in effect leads to a very powerful position of general uh, of GPs in the uh, uh, in the market. Also, what we've heard e earlier, there's a strong emphasis on primary care and substitution from hospital care to primary care. 
uh, and I'll go into that in one of the cases I wanted to present uh, to you. Um, are consumers quite satisfied with the, problem, with, the, with the system as it works at this, uh, at, at this point? They're not quite happy. Um, uh, in, 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 in practice, there's a fairly limited choice uh, for consumers between uh, GPs, because mostly because the, the, uh, in towns they have uh, the entire working area is cut up and you can't just go to another part of the city and register with another, uh, with another uh, GP. On the other hand, providers are not very happy with the way uh, the health insurance companies uh, act. They say there's no room for negotiation on quality, there's no quality differentiation. All we have to do is sign a standard contract and that's the extent of our negotiation with the, uh, with the health insurance company. As you can see, there is a strong imbalance in, 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 in market concentration between the health insurance companies and the care providers. Uh, also, what's currently an issue is that uh, because of a, a very uh, strong effort of health insurance companies and the prices of medication, um, also bringing down profit margins for pharmacists. A lot of pharmacists are getting out of the market, thereby further reducing uh, consumers' uh, choices. Um, to go into that somewhat more for the, um, uh, from the point of view of primary care providers, uh, I want to present two cases uh, uh, to you. The first one considers the cooperation between primary care obstetricians and hospital gynecologists. Uh, the background of this is that um, some 10, 10 to 8 years ago, some, some reports on, and OECD statistics, uh, they were mentioned here in the, in the room earlier, um, mentioned that the Netherlands had a fairly high uh, infant mortality uh, in, in, in newborn. Um, and it was thought that our, our, uh, our standard system of childbirth uh, at home was the cause of these, uh, this high mortality. Well, this, of course, was uh, rather strongly denied by the, uh, by the primary care uh, obstetricians. Um, but still, there was a, a national steering committee uh, was uh, installed which published new guidelines in 2009, which mainly um, uh, uh, meant to, to, to improve a better coordination of care between the primary care uh, providers and the hospital, uh, the, health, the hospital care providers, also on the point of sharing medical information and transfer of, uh, of patients. This resulted in a change in the professional guidelines for, for treatment, but also a great change in attitude between the primary care providers and the, uh, the secondary care providers, because formally, these cultures, they, they, they didn't mix, they clashed even, they wouldn't even talk to each other and certainly not go into uh, any uh, form of, uh, uh, of cooperation. Uh, what you see here, I, I, unfortunately I didn't have the maps in English uh, available, what, what you can see here is how 24-hour uh, uh, obstetrician service in hospitals is spread uh, over the country. Uh, you can also see what the traveling time is to the, to the closest, uh, closest hospital, which offers uh, 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 gynecologist uh, care. In one case, in the city of Apeldoorn, which is uh, somewhere uh, slightly east of the center of the, of the Netherlands, we had, uh, there was one ho there's still one hospital, and they had fo four primary care obstetric practices. Um, and what they eventually did was that the hospital, on, on the initiative of the hospital and one of the practices, they started a corporation. Uh, now this was an, uh, rather innovative, but the, the, uh, they, they built an outpatient uh, birth center annexed to the hospital. And they went into one corporation, which actually meant that the, the hospital kind of invested in the primary, uh, the primary, uh, the primary care uh, uh, practice. Um, the advantages for this was that the primary care had better access to, to obstetrics and building the birth center annexed to the hospital meant that in case of emergency, patients could be transferred immediately towards the emergency services uh, department. Um, what we saw further was in this case, particular case that the health insurers, they were not leading in the, uh, in the initiative and they were rather reluctant to participate in, uh, in, uh, in the, uh, at the start of it. Uh, it is functioning now as of 2012, but that's mainly because of the effort of the hospital, which, uh, which put in a lot of resources and its, uh, its time and also invested in the, uh, in, in, in the building. Um, another example that's also been mentioned here and in, the, uh, in the tour I had of the, the primary, uh, of the, the, the Mellow Center, 
cooperation between hospital emergency services and primary care emergency services. Um, background of this is that the, the general practice, the GP, is actually the service of, the, of the, the, the center of the primary care, and any patient is uh, supposed to go to his or her personal GP, in a, whether, it's, um, whether it's emergency care or whether it's, it's, it's uh, non-urgent non uh, care. But over the years, we've seen a profound change in the GP uh, profession. We saw an increase in the number of group practices, uh, but they're still relatively small scale. And also because of many new uh, GPs prefer working part-time, they just have a hard time for fulfilling uh, the 24-hour service that they, they actually uh, wanted, uh, that, that's actually demanded of them. So what they did was, in the, um, somewhere in the 90s, they came up with another organization uh, form uh, and they, to, to organize the GP services uh, in, in evening nights and, and, and weekend uh, hours. GP services during office hours were still on a traditional uh, basis, but in the evening you were no longer supposed to go to your own GP, but just make an appointment and go to one of the uh, GP emergency uh, stations. Um, which got another uh, completely different compensation model, model um, which is a bit too complicated to explain in this short time that we, uh, that we have. But in the end, about 95% of GPs participate in organizations like, uh, like these. Still, we saw a, a change in the behavior of, uh, of patients. Uh, many patients start visiting hospital emergencies instead of their GP. Why? Well, because they're easy to find and they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, they also started to go to the GP emergency station instead of the during office hours to their own GP practice. Uh, this all resulted in higher costs and also in some inefficiency in handling uh, patients. Um, you can see here the, the, uh, the, the coverage of um, these GP emergency posts and the, uh, the hospital emergency uh, uh, stations, which give a, a, fairly, uh, a, f a fairly good coverage of the entire country. Anyone in the Netherlands uh, is able to reach an emergency hospital uh, station um, or <coughs> within 45, 45 minutes and can be reached by ambulance in 15 minutes. So that's quite, quite a good effort there. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, in the central region of the Netherlands, uh, servicing about 130,000 inhabitants, uh, we had one hospital and about eight GP practices. Uh, and they, founded, they also founded a corporation uh, where the, the, the hospital put in, uh, put in money uh, and one of the local health insurers, which had the, mar the largest market, uh, market share, also was, uh, was willing to pay extra for the extra uh, production the GPs were going to, to put in. They were, to, they were to, to work extra hours to, to relieve the, the pressure on the hospital emergency uh, uh, services. This corporation started to function in 2008, and one of the essential things was that they introduced one central triage system so that any patient walking through the door was initially seen by GPs and not by any hospital, uh, hospital staff, and then afterwards it was decided whether the patient would be referred for further treatment into, uh, into the hospital. Now this seems to be quite, uh, seemed to be quite successful, but nevertheless this corporation quit in 2010, and mainly because the health insurance company pulled out. Um, they were no longer willing to pay extra uh, and, uh, uh, and, 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 well, the GPs were no longer willing to, to work extra hours for, no, for, no, uh, f uh, for less income. Um, so there the, 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 uh, the, uh, the initiative kind of, uh, kind of stranded. Uh, nowadays, however, the, one of the largest uh, health insurance companies in the Netherlands uh, has, uh, has, made, has a new interest in initiatives like this and is trying to stimulate them also to the point where they would like to have the emergency post open during office hours, which is a, a, a break with tradition and is also meeting a lot of oppositions for, opposition from the GP uh, organizations. Um, if we look at some conclusions from these cases as related to the, uh, to the aims of the health insurance uh, system, as I explained it uh, to you, we see that the initiative to reorganize care often lies with, uh, with providers. And as we have heard today, in most cases, uh, it takes a determined and quality-driven 
uh, uh, provider to reorganize it, uh, put together a, uh, a viable business case, and then present it to a health insurance company. It's never working the other way around. At least I haven't seen it in the Netherlands. Uh, and I think that will, would, would be the case here uh, also in, uh, in Ireland. We see that health insurance companies are uh, often reluctant to participate. Uh, they're very anxious to, to transgress any, any forms of, of, uh, of, of regulation. Uh, there's also the free rider problem because competing health insurance companies, uh, they, they not always have the incentive to pay more and they can just sit back and wait until another health uh, insurer uh, will make the in, uh, investment. And also, as you, if you have seen, in, in negotiating really detailed initiatives with, uh, with primary care providers, they, they're just facing a manpower shortage. Uh, they don't even have the contracting and the manpower, uh, the, the manpower enough to, to go into detailed financial constructions with many uh, primary care uh, providers. What we also see, and which was never meant, to, actually never meant to be, was that hospitals strongly tend to support local primary care uh, providers. There's one very good reason for that, because they have a commercial interest. It's their... Uh, it's, it, uh, the, the, the primary care sector is also, they're, they're not really competing with hospitals, it's also a, a source of, uh, of incoming patients. So good relations with primary care uh, providers are very important for, uh, for hospitals. So they, 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 by investing in initiatives and working together with primary care uh, on a regional basis, they, they actually um, uh, manage to, to, to get a very strong foothold in, 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 in regional uh, care. Um, also, hospitals are facing a, a strong pressure to improve efficiency. Um, and as we've seen in, the, in the, the two cases that I briefly outlined to you, uh, they, the hospital in both cases uh, could profit from better efficiency and a better efficiency in handling, uh, in handling patients. Um, we have made some recommendations to improve the regulatory mo uh, model in, uh, on this, and mainly by further strengthening the role of, of insurers and abolish all unnecessary regulatory of obstacles also in financing. What's very interesting here is that uh, Mr. Rayleigh this morning said that he was in fav strongly in favor of uh, uh, singular financing. So financing for hospitals only goes to hospitals, financing for uh, primary care only goes to primary care. And we are kind of, we had that system for, for 10 years. We find it's not working. So we, we tend to, to move away from it and give, the, uh, and give more uh, leeway to, to insurance companies and providers to come up with financial constructions where it's actually beneficial for them to, to substitute care from uh, hospital to, uh, to primary care. Um, is the Health Insurance Act, uh, is, is it finished? Well, it, it's not. It's been on debate, it was introduced since uh, in, in 2006, as I said, and for the past six years it's been um, permanently under change and under, uh, uh, under discussion. Um, there is some controversy over the income dependent part of the health insurance, uh, the health insurance fee. Um, and the, the recently inaugurated uh, Dutch uh, coalition government has put up, uh, has come up with proposals to change the, the funding. Uh, there was such a lot of political uproar that uh, after only 10 days they had to withdraw this proposal again and are now working on an, uh, another plan on which I cannot, uh, I don't know the details about it so I can't give you any, uh, any, any further information uh, on that. Another essential thing is that um, uh, apart from the three different policies in the basic po uh, package I, uh, I mentioned, uh, they want to allow only a care in kind policy. The idea behind that is that you, uh, that you give more power to the, uh, to the uh, health, health insurance companies in contracting specific and selectively uh, contracting hospitals and primary care providers. Um, the downside of this from a consumer's point of view, and, a co and Dr. Crowley made this point, is that you don't, as a consumer, you, don't can, you do no longer get to, to choose your own provider. You cannot go to any hospital or any, pro uh, any primary care provider you like because you're, you're, you're kind of forced to go only to the, uh, to the contracted, uh, to the contracted uh, ones. Um, the entire financial system of the compensation for GPs and hospital emergency services will be changed and they will probably come under one regional, regional budget 
the, 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 also here the, de the devil is still in the details. We don't know what, uh, which, uh, how, how this is actually going to, to, to work out. And a very important one, but which is uh, strongly emphasized by our, our health minister, is that she is leaning away from competition, which is somewhat strange from a right-wing uh, 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 minister. But she uh, is, is a strong emphasis on cooperation, also with an aim of uh, improving the, uh, the, the level of uh, quality of services uh, delivered. And there's more uh, from the same uh, point comes the, there's an increasing attention to, to differences in, in the quality of, uh, of care. But as you see, as the, the, the model that I, uh, uh, that I briefly described for you uh, is, is, is kind of fundamentally challenged by these new, uh, by these new proposals because if you have a, a, a health insurance system that's based on a, on a two-tire uh, competition uh, model, and you kind of abolish competition, said, okay, we, we have the legislation that says competition, but in reality we are all going to cooperate nicely. So you get a slightly biased, uh, uh, biased uh, uh, system. Um, and I think it's, it's very hard to, 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 to predict uh, uh, how the developments will, will be over the, next, uh, over the next couple of years. But um, uh, one thing is certain, it's the 25-year the discussion uh, hasn't ceased in 2006. And um, I don't think it will for the next uh, for the next uh, years. Thank you for your attention and your uh, patience.